my lovers welcome to my channel my name is made for love and welcome to another kind of wax or seromancy reading okay it is not the kind of candle wax reading where we watch the candles burn down and then interpret the wax we're actually going to be um, interpreting the wax drippings that fall into the water and this is blessed water um, it's a mixture of spring water and water from um, the cathedral on the hill Mount St. Benedict's some holy water okay so um, what we're going to do now I've done about two or three of these already and there's a playlist you can go and check them out if you want to but what we have is different candles that represent um, I'm not going by the chakra system yes I am <laughs> yes I'm going by the chakra system um, that d represent the different energy centers and we're just going to see what's going on there and, we, we, and we're also comparing them to past candle wax readings to see if there is any kind of progress any kind of movement and what is the message today um whatever we don't understand in these readings um we're going to clarify in the extended um with the tarot i'm going to write down the questions because questions always pop up why did the flame go out blah 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 because there's one time like three of the candles then bloody well light. Okay, so we had to ask questions about that. So that's what we will do in the extended, but I am going to give you um, the message here. So the first thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at your person's um, spiritual energy. Third eye crown chakra, okay? So I'm going to be using this purple candle and using, I'm going to light it in this one. And let's see, okay. So it's lit. <laughs> kind of struggling a little bit um this time the last time it was like the brightest one um out there which was a big change for us because usually that one was always a dimmest so we do have a flame it's struggling to light but it's lit and it's holding so your person um they might be low a little low in their spiritual energy but i do get a concerted effort by them um, to raise their spirits and to really tap into um, that higher wisdom, that intuition, and to trust their intuition. Maybe it was slow going, you know, really trusting themselves, okay, but it looks like they're trusting their intuition at this time. All right, so let's. So remember, I'm the reader, but you are also a reader. So that's why you too should be looking um, at the candle wax pattern. So what am I seeing here? So what I'm getting is that your person right now um, is doing a lot of research. Weirdly enough, this research is on cursed energy. I don't know where the hell that, that came from. Yep, 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 yep. They're, they're looking at um, spells, curses, things that people do to make other people stuck or bound. I don't know why. We're going to ask why. Okay, so remember that question. Oh gosh, I have to remember the question, okay? So we're going to ask why are they doing that sort of research? Because there's something here. They have been making some observations about the people that are in their circle. And they are realizing that there's some people who are in their inner circle that should not be in their inner circle. Their intuition is telling them that. Now I'm seeing that your person is really protected at this time by their ancestor spirit guides because... There's more than one person that's sending your person. Um, I heard a dark force energy. So they're harnessing some kind of um, um, entity. And usually those, those are pretty powerful. Uh, I'm going to tell you as a spirit release therapist, when people start harnessing these entities, especially demonic entities, um, to do any kind of binding work, those are very, very powerful um spells hexes curses and they take a long time to remove and sometimes multiple attempts um to remove especially if you don't know what you're doing okay but i do see them being protected by the ancestors here um now your person is forming new links with People who are coming into their life. Um, yeah, it's, it's like a new group of people. I think we saw this in the last reading. Um, are coming, are being attracted 
um, to your person right now. But even in, no, I think this is probably old people. Even in the new people that are being attracted to your DM, um, your person needs to show or practice some kind of discernment. Some of these people are implants. What are implants? Um, those are people that, um, the dark or people who wish your person ill. Um, they send them into your person's circle and they're, they're there bringing their toxic energy. They're trying to basically destroy you from the inside. So your person needs to have their discernment on right now. I am getting... Yeah, it's... it's there, listen, there's a lot of people around your person that are sending your person like bad vibes. Psychic attacks from all sides. And psychic attacks don't have to be um, people practicing black magic or anything like that. It could just be people who wish your person ill. Even because remember, you can curse people with a thought. You can curse people with um, words. It is once the energy is strong enough, um, that can happen. Yeah, there's a group here that's plotting. And your person knows. Your person knows and that's why they've been doing this research. So I'm still going to ask why they're doing um, that sort of research. But your person knows. that they're, they're getting the messages. Their intuition is becoming more solid by the day. They realize that they are protected. For some of your person, for, for some of you, your person has always known that they were gifted because they were born with the veil or the cowl. So they're building upon that foundation. For others of you, your person in their ancestry, they have a lineage that's very powerful spiritually. But some of these persons made um, contracts or pacts um, with entities. It's, it's, it's part of the reason why your person's been having a really bad time and has been so, and has been spending so long um, in dark night of the soul. Gosh, there's a message here about the underworld, but I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it at all, but. And, and it's like. People know. People in the family I know about these contracts, these curses, but nobody has made any attempt to. Um, break these vows, break these contracts um, with these entities, with the dark un until your person, your person volunteered to clear this out. I'm getting right now, uh, your person vacillates a lot between um, feeling depressed and feeling uplifted. Um, they're really ungrounded at this time. But but they are being protected. And if you see the little cocoon that, you know, this candle has made, you know, for your person, your person's protected. But your person is also protecting their energy. They are being buffered on all sides by all kinds of winds, all kinds of energies. They're, they're in their little caves. They're in their little cocoon right now. And they realize they have to protect their energy at this time. They are under attack, guys. They are under attack. And they know it. That's why they're doing research. They, they know it. They know it. So they're creating their own um, safe haven, um, safe harbor. Okay. Um, I'm not getting any further messages in terms of... Um, their spirituality, their intuition, and their spiritual body. I'm not, I'm not getting that. Okay, so let's let's go to the other candle. See, look, they're protected right in there. 
right in this little cocoon. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. See, they're covered. All right. Let's look at their mental energy. Hey, let me write these questions down because. All right. So we're going to ask um, why they're researching. like that magic or maybe we should ask what are they researching they're researching okay let me ask i'll ask both questions right what are they researching and then i did get that thing about that magic and protection so we'll get that let us look now at the mental energy oh shit the mental energy actually put out the main flame all right, so <laughs> we got an overthinker, right? <laughs> and every time this person starts thinking, this is what keeps their, their inner light so dim. You know, it's, it's the thoughts. It's the thoughts. All right, so let me light this back. Let me light this back. Yeah, the, the thoughts out of that, um, out of that fire. <laughs> I'm also getting that, you know, when your person starts thinking about action, because, you know, fire is action. <laughs> you know, um, their thoughts really, really kill, kill that. Okay, let's see. Let's look at the mental energy here. Okay. Right. So, I see biggest flame so far, right? And this is, this is held, hold, held true for every single reading that we have done. The mental space, that logical mind is always going over time. All right. So this is what's preventing your person from taking action right now. They're thinking too fucking much. They're thinking too much. All right. Let's see if their, their thoughts are scattered as usual. I think this is the first time that we've seen that their thoughts aren't scattered. They are focused on one thing and what they're focused on is building building what let me see right so from my side this is starting to take the formation um, of a heart so they, they, they're focused on, on building um, perhaps a new love connection a new um, philosophies um, that a, a new philosophy about love or what love is. It's like they're seeing love differently. Um, they're thinking different. This is what I'm saying. They're thinking differently about love. I'm also getting that, you know, this person might have been someone who is easily distracted or bored. And that's what's why maybe they've always had like multiple partners or something like that. But this is not the case right now. They're focused like on one thing on one person and building something with that one thing, building something with that one person. And expand. it's about expansion. Expansion. So it's about building a legacy. That's what I'm getting. Building something new. Building something that can last. That's what they're thinking about. So in the midst of all this that's going on there, okay, um, and all these people that who do not have good intentions, um, your person's not easily distracted at all. They are very much focused on what they want to manifest and what they want to accomplish. What do they want to accomplish? I'm going to ask that question. I'm really getting as well that your person's mind is so powerful that even for some of you where your person's not spiritually inclined just yet, their mind is so powerful that they are creating a sort of spiritual protection that's blocking out these haters. They're creating, yeah, they're creating their own protection out from, from their mind. It's their mind. 
and they're creating a fortress that these people here cannot penetrate. It's like your person has your person has latched on to some kind of truth, some kind of clarity, and this clarity is allowing them to block out what all these other people have to say and what these people might be trying to do um, to your person. Your person's mind is so powerful. It's literally like them against the world. But because they have clarity now, and that clarity is, you know, becoming more solidified, crystallized um, day by day, that they're able to block out the opinions, the, vi the bad vibes, um, and the attacks um, from others. What else am I getting here? No. All right, not getting anything else from this candle right now. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to look at your person's heart space right now. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to use green, but green on green? Nah. <laughs> you guys won't be able to see the wax. Oh. Now, this is such a big flame um, for the heart space. Although we did start to see a big flame, I think the last time, it was, it was pretty intense, but not as big as this one. Okay, so your person's heart is ablaze. And I'm really feeling like an open heart vibes. Because this wax started flowing like almost immediately. And again, um, it's not scattered. Okay? Because look at the spiritual energy. It was scattered. All these people all around. This is not scattered. Your person is focused on one thing. One person. Okay? The energy, they're not spreading the love around. <laughs> right? It's just one person one person is in their heart one person is on their mind one thing is in their heart one thing is in their mind and and mind and heart are in a line like literally in a line in alignment so this is what they want here this is what they're th and they're thinking about how they're going to get there but the only thing that's kind of standing in their way is these other people so it could be the opinions and thoughts of other people or just the energy um, from other people as well. Yeah, your person's heart is like going with the flow because it's the only one that has started, the only mass that has started moving whilst the candle was dripping on it. So the heart is ready to go with the flow. Okay, the heart knows what's up. Um, they know it's time to make it's time to move. Okay. <laughs> so your person, um, they know deep inside in their heart space, it's time to take action. It's time to move. Um, the wax is dripping even faster. It's like, they feel like time is running out for whatever reason. Um, they've gotten some kind of message that time is running out for them to make their move. Okay. Yeah. I told you the mass is, is moving, right? They know to run out of time, but you know that your person's thoughts, it's their thoughts um that sabotage them but it's also their thoughts and their powerful mind at this time um that's that's saving them so that heart spade is lit right an overflow of love in the heart space what else am i getting here I do think that it's the first time that the heart space has been like so expansive. Usually, um, it's just a little, it makes a tiny little mass there. But this is the first time that it's ex it's so expansive and like so defined. Because it's kind of making a, a circle right now, right? So you know that it's, that's eternal love, never ending love. What else am I seeing here? Um, 
I'm also getting now the sand to look like from my side, the sand to look like an arrow there. So it like it's like this heart knows the direction that it needs to go. Yeah, it's even starting to move in that direction now. Right? They know the direction that needs to go and needs to go away from these people here, right? <laughs> Intuitively they don't know that, but look, something is holding. Something is holding this heart back. Okay, so that's maybe that's a question that we can ask. Um, what's holding back this heart from being wild and free and just um, following its natural course? What's holding it back? What's holding your person back right now? So maybe that's a question we can ask there. Okay, so I'm not getting anything else with this. Let me write that down. Uh, Listen back. And I think we wanted to know what are they thinking about, right? Okay. Let's see their sexual energy, sacral chakra. It's even dripping. Oh, Jesus. It was even dripping. It started. Dri <laughs> Sorry. It started dripping right in the candle. It's like inside the main candle. It, it didn't even wait. So they are good to go. <laughs> Somebody is very, very excited. Let's just say that. And again. They're not spreading the love around, okay? They're not spread. It's the it's concentrated on one thing, one person, and this this is even more free flowing, <laughs> more free flowing um, than the heart space. I mean, that candle wax started dripping right away, right? So your person's very very excited and very turned on um, by you. Look how concentrated it is. Just look how concentrated it is. And, so, and just so perfect. And that wax is just gushing out. <laughs> I don't think we need to clarify anything, right? Now, it could be as well that um, there's some sort of project that has really lit this person's fire. It could be that as well. Um, and it's something that they're spending a lot of time with. It might be even a project that they might have to collaborate um, with you or with other persons with. Um, yeah. Th this project is really... Um, th they're really passionate about this project, whatever this whatever this project is, they're really passionate about it. For some of you, that project might include um, having a child or children with you. I'm getting that. But I want you to notice how I, I didn't move the candle, but the sacral chakra is now about to link up um, with the heart chakra. So the, the object of their affection is also the object of their sexual attention. Um, now, I think I remember telling you guys once that when people, I don't really want to enter this tri triggering topic, but when people are sexually assaulted, sexually molested, uh, what is this? This is the first time we saw that, right? That the wax make that link there. Yeah, they're ground, they're trying to ground their desires and passions, okay? That's what I'm getting. And they're, they're also getting um, help from the divine to heal their sacral chakra. And that's why I think I started talking about people who were sexually molested as children, who were sexually assaulted, um, raped, whatever it is, had some kind of sexual violation. Sometimes what that does, it disconnects all sacral chakra um, from the heart chakra, okay? 
and we become very cold, especially um, in the conduct of our, our, our sexual liaisons. And so, you know, we have, sometimes we can become um, hypersexual, you know, promiscuous and, and, and very cold when it comes to, to sex. We have to, when we heal, we make that link back with the heart chakra. And it looks like this is what your person's doing now. So if you know your person had some sort of um, sexual violation when they were young or had some kind of blockage in their sacral chakra, um, know that there's direct healing coming from the divine um, pouring into their sacral chakra um, right now. Your person might even be doing meditations to heal their sacral chakra right now, but, but, but this is the first time we've ever seen this with a candle. And that's to tell you just how swiftly this candle is flowing. So even the candle has a little bit of an erection. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm not getting anything else with this. But isn't this the biggest mound <laughs> that we've seen? Okay. So your person very, very excited. But it's, it's, it's a, a, a sacred sexual energy. It, it comes from um, the divine. Okay, all right, so I'm going to leave it with its boner. Oh my, yes, thank you. And, and, and it's just flowing, right? So for some of you, they're just flowing. All right. Now let us look at your person's physical environment. Um, and, root, and root chakra issues, you know, let's, let's see. Oh, it's a lot of sexual energy there. Let's see what's going on in the environment. Okay. All right. So this is what has your person. Woo. Oh, wow. I was just about to say this is what has your person um, low vibing. But that kind of turned out kind of bright in the end. But it, it look, it, it's, um, it's really simmering down. All right. Let's see what's going on. No. Okay. Yeah, I was right. So this is what. Remember you said that your person might be going through um, extreme highs and extreme lows, bouts of depressions, moments of clarity and intuition. Um, and now we know why. It's, it's their physical environment. It's the people around them. Um, it's bread and, bread and butter issues and might be literally so. Okay. Um, and I think that's what they're thinking about because um, I didn't even notice where I placed this candle, but I placed it next to um, the thoughts. So I feel this is what your person is thinking about. And even look, these bread and butter issues, it looks like they're about to join up um, with the thoughts. So this is what's occupying your person's mind as well. Um, it, it is bread and butter issues. Okay. Um, yeah, those basic needs, basic survival. Um, and I think that's also what your person is thinking about, you know, just surviving all these people here because these people are infiltrating like every different aspect of your person's life except maybe um this this that's going on here the sacred sexual energy that's going on here but they're surrounding everything else so these karmic people are in your person's workplace um they're in your person's um i heard football club um they're they're in your person's church they're they're everywhere your person surrounded by so many karmics, but the only thing that they kind of penetrate is this sacred sexual, sacred sexual energy between you guys. Also getting um, a message about, and I think this is the second time it's come out um, for this week, about using both of you, using your sacred sexual energy or your sexual energy. Um for protection of the union and for manifestation. And I was telling you guys about, um, I think, some Egyptian sex magic. Um, I'm trying to remember the ritual. Now you can do this by yourself, you know, by yourself. Or you can do this with your person, preferably with your person, but I don't know how, how if they will go for it. And I think you're meant to bring yourself close to orgasm like seven times um each time imagining um the flame within you rising up 
and then when you're about to explode you just tap it back down again and then go again and i think at the seventh time um you explode and then visualize um what you want to achieve whether whether it's union whether it's protection all three what or why am i saying all three well whatever it is um i think i think that's that's the ritual I read it in passing some years ago. What is this? It looks like a locket. I'm also getting that in your person's day-to-day -day life, um, they keep their emotions, their passions um, inside, usually. But these days, it's like they can't control what they're feeling. I'm also getting like big outbursts um, of anger, okay, um, that affect those um, around them. I'm also getting in their everyday life, they can't help but think about um, the connection with you because this really looks like a heart with a locket for me, right? They really think about and about the connection with you and they do keep you um, really close um, to their heart. And because they're so frustrated, I think they there's a lot of angry outbursts. I feel like, or I'm seeing rather, your person is occupying two worlds. Two worlds. There's this world with you because you are with them constantly. And then there's this other world. And this other world is beginning to seem less and less real it's like they know who they have to build with you know and, and nothing else seems to matter anymore I feel a lot of frustration and it, it's like a volcano that's just going to overflow and overflow on some of these karmic people here okay alright so that's what I'm getting guys so, so that is the end of that reading i am just going to pull an advice card for those who won't be able to join me in the extended oh my gosh i have to go across here for the advice card hold on right yeah and this advice is coming from a new from a new deck that i got from teresa s and it's madam indora's um fortune telling card so what i'm gonna do let me just give it a quick shuffle And I'm going to pull advice for the masculine. And, oh, shit. Okay, let's say this for the masculine, right? <laughs> and it says the black cat. <laughs> let's pull this out of the... So that could, could be for the masculine inside of you. Well, that's for the masculine and the feminine. Okay, feminine's got two cards. Okay, so for the masculine energy, since it came out first... And we have black hat. Your luck will soon change. So um, DM just needs to know that there's going to be that wheel of fortune moment, which we've been channeling all week, right? Um, all they have to do is follow their intuition because cats are always a symbol um, of intuition and of spirituality. So they just have to look out for that moment, that opening in order to make that little jailbreak, right? <laughs> yeah, so... Your, your your DM is feeling a little down, down in the dumps right now, but um, Spirit is going to intervene um, in this, okay? Spirit is going to intervene and give them um, that doorway. Okay, so for the DF now, we have Earth. So from the time I see that, I know right now you need to be as grounded as possible. I mean, look, look at all the energies that we saw here, okay? So if it's an energetic connection, if you really believe that this is your person, um, you need to be able to just... Hold steady in the middle of this storm. Hold steady for your person because they're going to be going back and forth, tossed any which way. You have to be that ground and wire, right? So it says utilize logic, reason, and common sense. So this is not a time um, to be flying off into the ethers, right? This is a time to be as grounded as possible. And concentrating on your projects, exercising, um, getting outdoors is going to go really far um, in grounding this energy. And we also have fire and fire is about action. And it says reckless actions lead to conflict. Okay, so these two are, are connected. So Spirit is saying right now, it's not about it's not 
the time to make any sort of impulsive moves. In fact, it might not be the time to make any kind of moves at all, right? This is a time to be rounded. This is a time to be still. You know, peace be still. It's a time to be still, okay? Um, it's a time to, time to a time to focus on yourself. It's not a time to just mouth off. It's also a time to think before you talk, right? A time for diplomacy, okay? It's a time to be for diplomacy. It's not time for foot and mouth disease. It's a time for diplomacy and really thinking things through. So no um, fly by night words or reckless words or, um, you know, saying things off the cuff or, or doing things um, too spontaneously because spontane spontaneity is good. But now it's not time for that. Now it's time for like strategy. Okay, in both your actions um, and your words, it's time for strategy. Okay, all right. So, guys, um, if this is resonating with what you've already got within your intuition, join me in the extended version, and there we're going to clarify um, some of the messages that we got, and we're going to pull some more advice cards as well. But I hope you enjoy this reading. Grateful for your like, share, subscribe, just likes. They all help the channel grow. And if you're able to go a step further and interact with any of the ads that may have played during this reading, that's a beautiful energy exchange for me. And please do for any reader that you enjoy because it really helps Spirit's message to get mobile, right? Um, and circulate um, throughout YouTube. All right, take care. Bye.